Now, many people think of Golden Valley as the home to General Mills, Honeywell, and Theodore Worth Park. And those are the big ones, but there are a few other things about Golden Valley that might surprise you. Here's Delane Cleveland with three things. We start off on Golden Valley Road at the headquarters of the Golden Valley Historical Society. This little white church, which is also the city's first church, has a rich history that dates back to the late 1800s. The original building uh, was built in 1882, and it was just this one room. The early settlers had to move the non-denominational church to this spot 18 years later when the landowner decided he wanted to mine gravel at its original location. And then they moved this one-room church, pulling it on, uh, on with, by horses and mules, rolling it on logs, and setting it on this foundation. And it's stayed here ever since. In 1996, the Historical Society voted to buy it for $84,000. And so a little lady sitting in the back of the room raised her hand and said, you hoo would it be all right if one person donates the money to buy the church? And the members looked at each other and said, yes! Today, it houses Golden Valley memorabilia, including hundreds of old street signs, and plays host to dozens of small weddings. Less than a mile away on Douglas Drive sits Weekly Orthotics and Prosthetics, which also dates back to the late 1800s. They're one of the largest and locally owned manufacturers and providers of these products in the area. It functions a lot like uh, a pharmacist would, where a doctor will write a prescription for a specific device uh, for a specific condition that a patient has and is being treated for. Weekly builds artificial limbs, custom fit for their patients, right in their on-site laboratory. What we try to do is restore as much of the comfort and mobility and independence, really, uh, that that patient should have. The company is now in its fourth generation of family ownership, and it continues to thrive. The reason is um, that I think we stick to basics as far as taking care of people. One of the things Golden Valley prides itself on is its park system. The very first Golden Valley Park Board was established way back in 1948, with Lillian Seaman serving as the first park board president. At that time, it was a three-person board that was a legal board. They had the power to tax at that time, and uh, uh, they started out with a $500 budget. With that money, they were able to acquire land for two parks, one of which eventually became Lillian Seaman Park. But the Golden Valley Park Board wasn't done there. If we can jump ahead then to 1967, the city then held a bond issue uh, for $1.6 million and that was for the acquisition and development of Brookview Golf Course and Brookview Park. Today, Brookview Golf Course and Park is a popular destination for people wanting to enjoy some time outdoors. In fact, Golden Valley has more than a thousand acres dedicated to parks and open space. The city also has uh, Theater Worth Park, which is located predominantly in Golden Valley. Jacobson says 520 acres of Theodore Worth Park is located within Golden Valley's borders although it's operated by the Minneapolis Park Board. But it's just another thing that makes Golden Valley a popular recreation destination. Doing active sports or cultural activities, classes, this type of thing is good for your health, good for your mind, and, and good for the general well-being of the community. In Golden Valley, Delane Cleveland, 12 News. And here are a couple of bonus tidbits about Golden Valley. The city used to have its own school district until the 1980s. That's when the school district ended and Breck, the private school, bought the high school and moved there from Minneapolis.